Teaching a dyslexic learner can be as rewarding as it is challenging. Every student is different, and the teacher or parent needs to work out the most effective way for their pupil to learn. But there are some basic principles that can be applied to most learning situations to help teachers and parents create a foundation for learning with their pupil. I start with the premise that all children are fantastic learners. It's just that sometimes the way they're taught doesn't match the way they learn. It's about finding out from the individual child what their potential learning strengths and their potential ways of memorising that work really well for them are. What do you like especially about what you've done with the small letters? It stayed in the yellow. Stayed inside the yellow, good girl. It's a very personal thing sometimes working with these, these children because they do come with a lot of anxiety sometimes about, about their skills. The school environment can be really crushing for children who have difficulties. It's nobody's fault, it's just that's the way things are. And this kind of support, you know, you realise that you're doing not a counselling job, but you're there talking about their self-esteem and how to raise that and really acknowledging the successes. And it's, it may just be tiny steps but you have to acknowledge those successes and work with it. So you do get to know the children quite intimately. You get to know their learning strengths, what they, they don't respond to, what they do respond to. So it can be quite a sort of personal journey with some of the children, yeah. Well done. I think you've both done really well. Thank you. As well as working out how their pupil learns best, for instance, whether they prefer a narrative, visual, audio, or some other learning route, it's also important to find out about their interests and hobbies. Exercises or games built around those interests are more likely to engage the learner. Gold. Excellent. Foul. <laughs> For football mad William, Katie builds word games around the sport and his favourite club. Penalty. Well done. How did you work that out? One of the key things um, with new pupils is getting that rapport for them to realise that it's OK to make mistakes, nobody's going to get cross, you know, if they make a mistake, then it's for me to think, how am I going to make sure that that either doesn't happen again or we address it in a way that is non-threatening um, so that we can make it into a learning opportunity. Letters seven. Letters eight. I've got oh, Stanford, what's all. your word? I've got, I got, um... Penalty. Penalty. So do I get these? Yeah, you got them all. Oh. The individual is key. Um, children who have got difficulties, we can do something to help them fit in rather than the other way around, expecting them to fit in with the way we are. Because each learner is different, a one-to-one -one session is preferable, though not always possible. A good teacher can then plan a lesson for the specific pupil, and adapt the session, if necessary, as it progresses. Obviously, I'm always watching out. Some learners can get very distracted, very tired easily, because they're working so much harder to concentrate, particularly if they've got attention issues. Um, some learners need to move around, so we may get up and we may actually play a game on the floor or, or move to a different workspace. You have to be very vigilant so that, you know, in the moment you can change the lesson, you can change the direction of the lesson to ensure that you're getting the most out of your learner. Now, I thought it would be quite a good idea to look up where this word originates. Have you any ideas where it could originate? The learning environment is important too. It should be colourful, well organised and inviting, with a minimum of external distractions. Okay. The learner will get to know their environment, and the more comfortable they are with it, the more relaxed they'll be about their learning. You want stuff that's eye-catching, but not busy. So you don't want too many things on the wall, not, not too much for the children to get distracted by. So I have all my resources in boxes like this, and then I have some important information on the wall that the children can access simply but there's not too much that will take their mind off the activities that we're actually doing at the time. This morning we're going to learn about vowel sounds. And we're going to use this little card to help us. He is... At the start of each session, the teacher should take time to explain what's going to happen. This will help dispel any apprehension about the lesson. This 
act as a visual timetable so that when the children come in, they'll know that we're going to do some puzzles, um, some thinking about how things go together. So this might work for sentences or just for spelling. And then we're going to use some thinking skills and then they'll know that there they've reached their goal and it's, that's the end of the session. Um, for some children, they like to take it out when they've done it because then they feel a bit like a tick list, you know, I've done that, it's gone. It shows them a natural progression of how the lesson's going to be. If they have no idea what they're going to come in and do, um, here they know that they've got four tasks and then once they've done those, they know that that will be the end of their session. We're going to just find out if you know what a syllable is. Do you know what a syllable is? Is it when you break up a word like butter, butter? Yeah, so... It's also important to check how much the learner already knows. Getting the pupil to reinforce their existing knowledge can be a good confidence builder. So the first one, how many syllables in that word? One. One in the first one, so hot. When the lesson gets underway, it's vital to make it multi-sensory. Use a variety of approaches, including games, to teach each principle. Good, OK. Lily, quick. For a dyslexic learner, they need not just to have black and white on a page, they need to have it in different senses. So they need to see, to hear, sometimes to feel. So uh, for, for younger students, I have um, feely toys of the different vowel sounds um, and then different ones for the vowel names so they can feel it and then they have a, a different memory rather than a visual and an auditory, they, they actually have a kinesthetic, the feely, the feely memory of the, the letters. Um, and we have the letters on sandpaper or on foam so that they can feel it and actually move the letters individually around. Any individual child will have a range of memory strengths that work for them. They might have seven or eight different types of ways of learning that work for them. Let's suppose that they are what I call video memory, running back a kind of video in their mind. Maybe colour is a good memory anchor for them. Maybe rhyme is a good memory anchor for them. So in the teaching point, you will want to put three memory strengths together. So you'll be teaching with video and with video memory by acting something out. Maybe literally putting it on video memory now that we've got technology that we can do that. You could, making good use of colour for your teaching point and building in rhyme. And those are the three memory strengths together for that individual. Yes. Information should be given in small chunks, with the learner given positive feedback and reinforcement at each stage. Really, really well done, Alice. You've mastered the sound of the wine now, OK? okay. At the end of each session, the teacher should check how much the pupil has understood and whether they feel happy and confident with their progress. This can be a helpful pointer in planning future lessons. I think it'll be okay. I think it'll be okay because our spelling system is very weird. It very is. weird because um, we have all sorts of different sounds for the letter I, for the letter E, loads. Do you think you might enjoy learning though? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's great. Alice, I really enjoyed reading your review. You've clearly got the task. Um, you've made a fantastic draft. I'm glad that you... Giving verbal feedback on work is an important part of the dyslexic learner's journey. It reinforces the sense that their work has been properly appraised and can help the learner's self-esteem. I think um, it's very valuable kind of feedback because immediately it's really personal. I would make sure, um, obviously, that the piece of work they'd done was available for us to be looking at together. I would always um, give the most positive version of anything, even if they've completely misunderstood the task. It's really important that they feel there's great credit to having spent the time on it, just for you to be really aware and appreciative of how much you've asked of them and how much they've given. Because once you've got them on side in that way and they feel that everything you say is supportive, even if you have to say you've done this completely the wrong way, you can find a way of saying, we can improve this or, you know, my suggestion for next time, etc. Do you think that's a long vowel sound or a short vowel sound if it's got an A? Long. Long, good girl. So it goes in with the long line. The long line, good. It's worth remembering there are no quick fixes with teaching a dyslexic learner. 
and the teacher may have to spend considerable time building a rapport and working out what works best for their student. The important thing is to work together to find the best way of learning for each pupil. It can be really fun to, to work with children and it, you do become quite special to them because their vulnerabilities are really exposed which can be different from the relationships they have with other adults. Also you might work with them for a very long time. So I worked in a school and I would work with them, you know, they would, have, they would go through one teacher, maybe another teacher and they'd still have a link to the person that's helping them with their dyslexia needs. So you have a long-term relationship often, which can be very special.